Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh, and happy Star Wars Day. Today, I wanted to talk about Star Wars, because what better day to do it? And I want to do a bit of an interesting discussion. I want to talk about genre. What genre is Star Wars, exactly? So, this is a topic that's been brought up in my friend group multiple times. I've had this conversation multiple times in my life, and I just wanted to kind of make a, a fun little video talking about it. And when it comes to the thing of genre, the first initial gut instinct is sci-fi. Obviously, right? Science fiction, spaceships, outer space, different planets, alien species. Why wouldn't it be sci-fi? I don't think it's sci-fi except in aesthetic only. I honestly believe that you take the sci-fi aesthetic out of Star Wars, the movie still works just fine. Genre to me is more about what the heart of the story is trying to tell, not really the aesthetics. So when you take away spaceships and replace it with, I don't know, long ships, for instance, you different planets for different countries, you know, it, it works the, exactly the same. Yeah, there's this big imposing ship with a large cannon that can blow apart an entire country. That still works. That part's a little bit more sci-fi, I'll give you that. Like, there are bits and parts of this thing that, like, sci-fi for sure. There are sci-fi elements in Star Wars. But that's not the beginning, middle, end of the conversation. The flip side of sci-fi is oftentimes fantasy. And I truly believe that's more or less the conversation that should be had about Star Wars. Is that it's a fantasy film. A space fantasy, if you will. But a fantasy film. Now, when talking about fantasy stories, what is the heart of a fantasy story? Well, it's normally about adventure, it's normally about uh, family ties, it's a long-stretching story, and there's magic and mysticism and special creatures and all these things about it, right? Star Wars has all of these elements. The Force could basically just be a form of magic if it wants to be. You could say it's a religion, but a lot of fantasy properties have religion as part of their mythos anyway. D&D, for instance, has wizard magic and godlike magic and your clerics and wizards alike so either way you want to spin it both could be entirely accurate like the force could just be this this magic thing that everyone can use but like some people are just better at it than others or it could be like this religion that we have to kind of like focus on and like some people are selected to be it that's the fun discussion when talking about star wars is what the force is I don't like hard and fast facts. I think midichlorians is the sci-fiification of a fantasy idea, and I do not like it. I don't think anyone really likes midichlorians, to be honest with you. That whole system seems silly to me. So we have our basis, right? Sci-fi, elements, fantasy, heart. So there's two other genres, though, that I kind of wanted to get into here. So when discussing a lot of stuff about Star Wars, the Western comes up a lot. In fact, it was on Cinefix's best Westerns list at number one, which is bonkers. I wouldn't go that far to say that this is a pure Western, a Western enough to say it's a Western. I think there are other space Westerns more akin to that. There's some anime that play in that, like Cowboy Bebop. There's some American stuff like Firefly. Other things do the space Western better than Star Wars. And I'm not saying they're better than Star Wars as a whole, but you get what I'm saying, right? For that genre, they're more of a picturesque of that genre. So, the Western theme, of course. Uh, but the thing is, with when thinking of Star Wars, a lot of people think of the original. Uh, the second one, the third one. When I say second and third, I don't mean episode two and three. I mean episode five and six. I think of the original trilogy. Honestly, there's not a lot of Western elements in the prequels. There's some more in the sequels. But the original trilogy absolutely has a deep Western influence in it. Uh, Han Solo pretty much a cowboy. Um, Mulliam Falcon could just be a horse <laughs> if if it needed to be. It doesn't need to be a spaceship. It could it could be a, a noble steed with a cart on it, and there you go. It works exactly the same. Smuggling works exactly the same. The bounty hunters, like, that's a full thing. And in terms of modern Star Wars, like, post-Disney buyout, the Mandalorian is through and through Western for a lot of it. Uh, I could, like, explain to people, like, yeah, this is, like, a Western show more than it is a sci-fi show. Like, obviously, yeah, aesthetic-wise, there's gonna be spaceships and aliens and my, 
you know, I, I remember showing it to my mother back <laughs> when it first came out, and she was like, I thought you told me this is a Western, this is a Star Wars. And I'm like, well, the Star Wars is a Western, but that's a whole other topic for another day. Today's that day. Today's that day we're talking about it. But of course, when talking about the Western, and this is a whole video idea I had one day, but honestly, I don't think even I've seen enough of either genre to discuss the ramifications of this. But the samurai genre in the Western genre oftentimes feel very similar to each other. It's just whether or not you like your flavor American or you like your flavor Japanese. The Japanese samurai genre is a wonderful thing, has some of the most iconic films in it, Seven Samurai, just to name one. I mean, I want to say the American also has equally uh, important films, and then my first thought was The Good, and The Bad, and The Ugly, but that's an Italian film. So, you know, who's to say? <laughs> Man, the American obviously has plenty of westerns. It's where the genre was born. It's where the genre is based, and the samurai genre is based in Japan. So Star Wars kind of combines the two, and the way it does that is with the sci-fi elements, like I was talking about, lightsabers and blasters are the only way you can have swords and guns, and neither one feel like overpowered or one feels obsolete. Like the swords feel more cooler in Star Wars because it's like this cool thing we've never seen before. A laser blaster is pretty like. Not obvious, but it's a much easier thing to kind of grasp an audience around. Like, okay, I get it. It's a gun that shoots a laser beam. A laser sword, though, way cooler. So now people love lightsaber more than they love the blaster. But if we strip away the sci-fi elements of it, all of a sudden if it's swords and guns, swords even bows even, that mysticism is lost. Now, that's where the sci-fi element has to stay. The fantasy element, sure, you can come up with a thing like, yeah, I mean, in D&D, &D, uh, you can have swords and bows, and neither one is super overpowered. Um, the paladin has the magic. The, the Jedi can be like paladins, and then like rangers with bows. But like that stuff gets super overcomplicated very quickly. And so the idea of blasters and lightsabers has to stay dated. Like... Sci-fi has to be element. Fantasy has to be there because the Force is a fantastical thing. Jedi as a whole seem to be like a fantastical thing rather than a sci-fi thing. Like we learn about the lore and the religion and the history of these people through that. And then the combination Western samurai genres, they always have to be there too. So what genre is Star Wars? It's a, it's a sci-fi fantasy Western genre. Samurai film? It's a samurai sci-fi western fantasy. A fan, a fantasy sci-fi samurai western. That's the probably the best way to put it. Fantasy sci-fi samurai western. Or no, sci-fi fantasy fan. I'm gonna get all... <laughs> you get what I'm saying though. Those four. No one part outshines the other part. But I think all poor parts are underrepresented within the conversation. And that's basically what this video was about. What genre of Star Wars? All four of them. Not one part can work without the other part. And I think we see some more of like the Western tropes, like I said in The Mandalorian, but the samurai tropes we see is stuff like Star Wars Visions. When we delve more into the Jedi, we hear about their way of life, how they have to be, uh, their way of thought. And the Clone Wars deals a lot of it as well, how they became like warriors more than monks, how they were supposed to be. So... It's a very interesting thing. And all four things live in harmony. And that's what Star Wars is. And that's why it's hard to replicate. I remember being a kid and watching Star Wars for the first time and like wanting more movies like Star Wars. But nothing really else like a Star Wars because Star Wars blends four genres together that don't exist together very often. And you're very rare to find something quite like that. So... My question this week was going to be, have you seen Star Wars? But I assume you probably have, so I'll ask this instead. What is your favorite Star Wars anything? Is your favorite uh, one of the movies, one of the new TV shows, one of the video games? Let me know. Maybe it's just a character. Maybe you just love a character so much that anything that involves them is your favorite. By all means, let me know. Um, I love Star Wars. Happy Star Wars Day, everyone. And thank you so very much for watching. As always, like this if you like this, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you at some point.